Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the surface of our sun and more specifically, why is it the sun kind of looks like this? It sort of looks like popcorn and it makes me really hungry. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to Adamai. Now a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video, the beautiful picture that you just saw was released by several different observatories including the National um, Solar Observatory whose telescope was used to take the beautiful and extremely detailed picture. Now after the picture was released a lot of people were actually asking me so why exactly does it really look like this? What's going on here on the surface? And the thing is when the picture was released a lot of people were asking me to make a video about it but there was really nothing much to say. It's a beautiful picture but there was very little I could talk about. Until several of you wonderful people left a comment saying but why does it look like this? What's really happening here? What's with the popcorn look? Why does it look like I want to eat it? And so this is why I decided to create this video briefly explaining what's happening on the surface of our sun and of course other stars and why it looks like such a peculiar structure that seems to be moving and churning all over the place. Now first of all let's actually take a look at this simulated star right here. This is a K-type star, slightly less massive than our sun. We're going to zoom into it and see if it has these cells as well. And here if I approach it really closely you'll see that it also has these unusual cells Although these ones are not moving because it would be really difficult to simulate all of this. And you'll find very similar effects simulated right here in Universe Sandbox. If you zoom into a star you'll notice that it does have somewhat interesting moving cells as well. But interestingly if the star is much bigger like for example let's just take a look at Betelgeuse because it's the most famous star of the year. Here these cells are much larger in size. So something similar but a little bit different is happening on the surface of larger stars. And just so you know, we've actually seen these cells by looking at a very very far away object using really powerful telescopes. So we know that larger stars do have larger cells. And so in a nutshell, each of these objects is what's known as a convection cell. And each one of these cells here on the surface of the sun is actually really large. It's a few hundred kilometers or I guess a few hundred miles across. Here the National Science Foundation used an image with Texas and a very large city sort of represented by this little dot and also this square. So just so you can see the size of each cell is in comparison. And although their size can be up to about 1500 kilometers in size, they usually last anywhere from about 8 to maximum 20 minutes and then disappear as they're being replaced by other cells nearby. So this is a very active process and it happens from within the sun. And what each of these represents is a kind of a column that we're looking at from top. And these columns are basically these huge plasma formations with the surface of each column being the plasma cell we're looking at. In much simpler terms it sort of looks like this with this being the cell we're looking at and the column going down. But in more realistic terms it gets a lot more complex on the inside. And so in a nutshell, as the hot plasma from within the sun, because obviously that's where the heat is coming from, starts rising to the top, the cooler plasma that's on top starts sinking to the bottom forming these ridges that we see as these black lines all over the place. So basically the middle, the brighter part, that's the hotter part, the darker part is the cooler part. And so we're really looking at two parts here. We're looking at these cells on the surface. These actually have a name, they're called Rayleigh Bennard cells or sometimes just Bennard cells. And the best example can be seen in a typical kitchen. Here are these cells forming as the actual heat difference on top and on the bottom creates these cells naturally. So for example, if you've ever boiled milk, you might have seen these form as well. And because both buoyancy and gravity are responsible for the formation of these cells, they also have a kind of a 3D component which is of course the column I previously mentioned. And these thermal columns are very very complex. One of the easier examples here on Earth is usually in regards to various weather formations. For example, things like hurricanes form in a similar manner as well. But the complexity of what's happening inside the sun is on a completely new level. So each of these cells has its own column that sort of lasts for a little bit and then disappears being replaced by other columns and other cells. And one of the better simulations I was able to find of this is by a wonderful person named Christian Hutig who created this Martian simulation of what Mars may have been like billions of years ago. And here you can see both the columns and cells interacting with each other. And this is essentially very similar to what's happening on the sun and how these convection cells form as well. 
And note that on average, our sun has approximately 4 million of these cells at, at all times. There are also other bigger cells underneath them. And so there's actually a very complex, very unique 3D structure inside our sun with much larger cells on the bottom, with some of them actually being responsible for the creation of various magnetic effects as well. Although these cells, the much smaller cells that you see here, are not actually responsible for any kind of magnetism. These are just the interaction of gravity with buoyancy and heat exchange. So this is more of an effect, not really a cause. And the much larger granules on the inside, uh, basically underneath the upper surface of the sun, can actually last up to about 24 hours and be approximately 30,000 kilometers in size, or at least 20 times as big. So there are actually several layers and they do interact with one another. But we'll actually talk about all of these other uh, inner parts of the sun in some of the future videos because it's a pretty complex topic. Nevertheless, it's pretty awesome to see how much our science has advanced in the last 20 to 30 years and how accurate our pictures have become. Not only do we have a picture of a black hole, we also have an extremely detailed picture of our own sun, taken from here on Earth. And as the time goes by, hopefully our telescopes get even better and we get to discover new mysteries of the universe. But until we discover more or until more information comes out about this beautiful picture, that's really it for now. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and maybe consider buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm also wearing right now as well. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.